Hey, what's up everybody, Josh here. And on today's video, we are going to dial in my favorite amplifier available in the STL tonality, Andy James plugin. This is the 5153 that they've modeled in here and more specifically the red channel of the 5153. So we're in for some high gain goodness yeah, and fun. Right. So I'll show you in this video how I like to dial in the amplifier for two different rhythm tones and then a crunch tone. And we'll talk about all of that as we go. So if you're into this kind of content, you enjoy it, drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel because we're gonna have more of this stuff in the future where we demonstrate plugins, we dial in some amplifiers and we have a generally good time. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. All right, everybody, welcome to our demo here of the 5153 in the Andy James plugin from STL. Now, you'll notice I have it in my DAW here with everything at neutral. We wanna start, honestly, with everything right in the center. We have nothing going on on the front end, so no boost, and we have nothing going on on the back end, so no pulsed effects. It's just amplifier and cabinet. So for the cabinet section, we have the cab one matching amp one, basically. This is STL's version of how amp one should sound out of the box with their speaker configuration. And I kind of like that because it makes things simple, as long as it sounds good, right? So let's hear how this amp sounds at noon with nothing going on on the front or in the back. All right, so off the bat, we're in a great place. What I notice about this amplifier is there's a nice, what I'd call like a warm blanket tone that isn't quite as throaty as the 6505 in this plugin, and it's not quite as honky as say like a 5150 block letter. There's a nice foundation for a lot of crunch and brightness, which I think we're gonna be able to use to our advantage. So let's dial in a good rhythm tone here. Starting on the left, I'm gonna actually cut the gain just a little bit because I actually prefer it a little less saturated. And then on the lows, we're gonna cut that just a tiny little bit. We'll boost the mids just a touch, and then the highs at about a seven or so. Now the resonance and presence controls, this is where we're actually gonna get our most contour tone shaping going on, if you will. We're gonna really use these two knobs to help us get there. So I'm gonna bump up the resonance to about a seven and my presence to about an eight and a half. I really like a bright sounding uh, rhythm. So let's see how these adjustments sound when we plug them in. All right, now the reason I like to have a little less gain on the front end is because I wanna really be able to shape my tone with my picking hand. So depending on how aggressively I dig into the strings, I can get a different tone out of it. So here's an example. I'll play this regular and then I'll play it a little more aggressive. All right, now a little more aggressive. So I really like to be able to control the dynamics with my picking hand, which calls for a little less saturation. But let's say we wanna play something that is a little less single note oriented and a little more chord oriented and a little more beefy, something like. Right? It sounds okay like this, but to really get the most out of it, what we're gonna do is kind of move on to the next phase of how I like to dial this in, and that's a little darker and a little more fat, okay? So for the gain on this one, I'm actually gonna bump this up to like a six and get a little more saturation out of it, and also I'm gonna bump up that bass, get a little more booty into it, so another six. And then the mids will keep where they are. The highs, eh, about a seven again maybe a little less than that. And then now on the resonance, I'm actually gonna beef this up a bit, and then I'm gonna turn the presence control down, so that way we're not going crazy on the EQ, but we're using the power amp section to really control that contour. So now let's give that another try. So 
So that is like version two of my rhythm tone for this amplifier and I think you could really kind of use the resonance and presence to shape the tone towards the end of it and not go crazy on your EQ and get some good sounds without changing it up so dynamically that it's a completely different planet. Now let's talk about if I wanted to crunch this amp because this amp is really crunchy so let's get the most out of it. So we're gonna dial that in now and what I like to do here is turn the gain down, way down to like a two because I want how hard I hit the strings to determine the volume and kind of the aggression in this sound. So we're gonna turn the gain down to about a two. Trust me, this amp has plenty, you're not gonna miss anything. For the low end on this, we'll crank it up a little bit. The mids, I like to crank up a little bit as well. And then the highs, we like to have the highs pretty high on this one, because we're going for a rock and roll kind of martially tone, if you will, whatever you want to call that. So the resonance for this, I will keep fairly high, and then the presence I like pretty high as well. So let's see how this sounds for a kind of crunch type tone. I think this is gonna be cool. Perfect. Again, if you're looking for kind of that martial -y rock and roll tone, this can totally do it and still have that tight crunch. So if you want to do some power metal stuff, you know. I love how tight and crunchy you can get with this amplifier. So those are three totally serviceable options for this amplifier and ones that I would use in a recording session. Now, if I wanted to do something lead-like, I would probably keep it in this realm here and I would boost the gain a little bit and then I would also add my reverb and delay. Turn that on and have something like this and it sounds pretty good for leads too. And we're getting a really fat tone, really smooth tone. I mean, that's in part because these, the reverb and delay are wonderful in this plugin, but it doesn't take much to make this amp sing for you. And I prefer the 6505 for lead tones in this amp, but, or excuse me, in this plugin, but this one does fantastic. The one thing this amp really doesn't do well is clean tone, so we're not even gonna try. Even if you put the gain all the way at a one, it's still gonna be <laughs> the red channel of a 5150, so. You can use the Vox AC30 in this for that, but that's another story. So I hope you enjoyed our little demonstration of what this amplifier can do in the plugin with no boost and no post effects except for the lead stuff. This is a wonderfully modeled, true amplifier sound that you can do a lot with. So if you wanna check out the plugin, it's available on the STL website. I'll have a link in the description below. Leave a comment, tell me what you like to do with this amplifier or what you do differently, and we'll see you on the next one.